What's up, Netrunner fans? This is Stonerunner back again with part two of round one of the first winter kit tournament that we held in Toronto at Heroes World. Uh, myself on the right again, this time playing Engineering the Future out of HB versus Aaron, who was playing Kate. Uh, he kept his hand and I decided to mulligan because my first hand was pretty poop. So we've got a initial install of a new remote getting me a credit and the standard oh, ice over R&D and a hedge fund. I thought it was going to be uh, HQ R&D, but I mean, that was actually the perfect turn. I don't mind that. So it's always always nice to start off with the 10 bucks. Uh, he runs and sees my beaver, which he pays to trash. I don't usually mind that play, but I mean, he definitely has ways of getting his money back up. So for him, it probably meant nothing either. As you see a dirty laundry on HQ to start. So he sees, couldn't tell what he saw there, sorry. But he now gains his dirty laundry money. So he's pretty much back up to what he was at uh, after trashing that Adonis. So he's checking out what he's going to do for click three here. I can see. So Katie Jones, and he taps Katie Jones. So recreate that remote, which was Jackson. <laughs> I told him it was Jackson before I put it down accidentally. Uh, second click to draw from Jackson. And just a little clarification there. He uh, missed the Jackson draw. And a second install, gaining no money this time because it's the second install of the round for me. So again, this was a 16-person tournament as he initiates a run on R&D, which I choose not to res and immediately regret it. Um, so a 16-person tournament out of Toronto. Uh, this It's a smaller store, so we had to kind of keep the size down as he steals a global food right there. Main reason why I regretted not resing that ice that you guys will see shortly. There's no reason why I shouldn't have really decided to res it. Um, I guess I just had more faith in my deck. Used to playing a... Uh, lower agenda density HB style where R&D runs usually don't hit too much so I was kind of be trying to save as much money as I could as he sees an EVE campaign there and Diesel's up for his third click And fourth click here looks like it's going to be an Astrolabe. Every time I create a new server, he gets to draw a card. And there it is. So I'm going to res the Eve campaign. That was part of the reason why I didn't want to res the ice over R&D. Just to keep my money up, kind of. Totally unnecessary. I should have res it. There's no reason I shouldn't have, like I said before. Um, you guys will see it eventually. Ice over HQ, getting me a buck. A Jackson draw and a hedge fund. And as you can see, I have not touched my click counters. <laughs> I was saying last game that I, I bust them out, but rarely use them. Unless it's a big tournament. Uh, like usually nationals and worlds, I'm pretty good with making sure that I use them every turn. Because you do end up thinking a lot more and you don't want to have any types of mistakes there. But... At these game night kit tournaments, I'm usually just there to have fun, as most of the Toronto guys know. I don't take it too crazy or too seriously. Yeah. 
So he's going to take his money off Katie Jones already to install what do we got. There's a second Katie in hand that I see. Sure gamble. The camera, the camera keeps getting bumped there. I wanted to put it on the ground, but I also didn't want it to get kicked. So we got Stimhack, R&D Interface, another copy of Katie Jones, and I think it is just three cards. Yep, just three. Quick click to draw, that's a modded. So his last click is to run and trash the Eve campaign. I had a feeling that that's what he was trying to figure out what he, if he wanted to do that or not. Um, having just gone up with a little burst of money there. And overall, I think that's an okay call. Um, although it doesn't really affect my credit lead too much currently. Uh, later on in the game, that probably ends up paying dividends for him by removing it so early. So good choice there to get rid of it while he can. So double install, new server. Uh, I don't know if he drew for Astrolabe, but I didn't look over. I did my best to remind him every time I created a new server. Yeah, there we go. So he got his Astrolabe. Again, he's a newer player, so I did my best to try to remind him of uh, the triggers that he might have missed and things like that. So we've got modded R&D interface, and it's going to face check R&D, which was an Eli. Like, there's no reason why I should not have res that Eli before. Just a bonehead move on my part. And he clicks through, seeing Turing, and I missed that top. Might have been an assassin. And just chooses to load Katie Jones and pass turn. So click one Jackson draw. Double ice. And you've got to guess that that's a Turing that I just put down there and created a new remote reminding him of his astrolabe. So I remember this game was uh, very frustrating for me because I wasn't able to find a lot of the deck pieces that I need. I could, I could barely find agendas to score out. Um, and there were definitely a bunch of opportunities for me to do that and take the game but i just i couldn't find them i was trying to dig with jackson wasn't really helping too much and especially knowing how long our first game went i was kind of trying to uh make sure that that this game didn't go to time so i wanted to speed it up but i also didn't want to overextend myself Just figuring out what he what he wants to do this turn. 
Um, again, he is up 2-0, but he doesn't really have too much in the way of uh, programs or resources set up. And there he sees the agenda that I was looking for. Steals an ABT, so that's 4-0. and throws down some money there on Katie Jones. So had I found that ABT, I would have been f feeling a little bit better about the situation. Um, it always hurts when you, you're digging for an agenda with Jackson and unknowingly leave one on the top of the deck for your opponent to take. Especially when he's just clicking through Eli's. So we've got something down in that, in that ice remote now. Two things down in that ice remote. Takes the money off Katie Jones for a second click. <laughs> Never mind. Loads Katie Jones instead of taking money off Katie Jones. Preparing for the future. <laughs> Engineering the future. So he runs the open remote and sees <laughs> a very fun card. Team sponsorship. When you score an agenda, you can play a card from archives or HQ. So I res the sponsorship that he didn't trash. Triple advance and score out. And ABT triggering team sponsorship to install an agenda from archives. And yes, I know I'm giving away, but it was an agenda. I believe it's an NAPD. Um, and so, like I said, had I been able to draw that ABT that he stole uh, the turn before, then things would have been a lot different because. I would have scored this ABT out, um, installed one off of team sponsorship right there, likely scored again the following turn, put me up to four, and then installed the NAPD out of archives. So it would have been a huge momentum swing. So he installs SMC to run R&D. As he's running, I res Caprice Nisei. He pops out Atman. So two for SMC, four for Atman. And then strength four. And then two to break. Geez, that's expensive. And then we play a side game. So I've got two credits. He's got what looks like five. <clears throat> so let's see what happens here. Gotta love them side games. I bet zero, he bets one. Run gets ended. He loses a credit. Maybe he was at eight. That looks like a seven there. It's hard to tell with these days. Uh, 
and last click to draw a card. Oh, I had more than two bucks. Never mind. Triple events and score a Chinese Project Vitruvius for the swag and trigger team sponsorship. Yeah, there was a glare on that one die, so I thought I had snake eyes. So we've got 4-4. Four, four. Which makes it even worse. For whatever reason, I thought that was an NAPD, but now I feel even worse about not being able to score out that ABT that he took from me. It's just tilting myself the whole time. Got the multi threader. I hate when that card comes out. <clears throat> so efficient, especially when Katie gets in solid at a reduced cost. And fourth click to load Katie. So ice the sponsorship, gaining me a credit. Advance. And uh, sorry, third click was to take a credit. So install, gaining a credit. Advance once in that remote. And then take a manual buck. So he takes the money off of Katie Jones already. He's going to run R&D. Spend two with Atman. Sorry, with multi Threader. I forgot about that. Play the side game again. Both bet zero. I betrayed my dice that time. So I always roll to figure out what I want to do. And uh, as he sees Jackson and Eli. So I always roll to see what I want to do and then end up disagreeing with what the dice tell me and then lose. Like whenever I listen to them, I do fine. Whenever I don't, it's usually when I lose a side game. So I'm terrible at side games. It's just terrible. My overall record must be like 9%. 9% chance of winning on as runner and as corp combined. Horrible. So double icing R&D because that is a very large problem with multi threader out there and he's just getting in there for free seeing two cards. Two is installing in that remote. So I'm thinking Breaker Bay Ash and an agenda. And third click to advance whatever it is in there. No res as he runs on first click into the remote. But based on his money here, uh, Breaker Bay and Ash, I don't even need to boost. And he can't afford to trash the Ash, so. So I got very lucky there. He doesn't have enough to beat the Trace, and he doesn't have enough to trash the Ash, so I didn't have to actually res any ice.
So another SMC out, which again I'm not worried about because of how little money he has currently. And there, that solves the money problem. So he plays stim hack, and runs at R and D. And so this this was my issue here, as well, um, by not being able to grab those two early agendas to to install and try to score them out. Um, yes, I did get to build up a remote that was difficult for him to get into. However, he pretty much has R and D on lockdown and so he's going to see any agendas that I could possibly score before I do. And he trashes the Adonis with the stim hack dollars. And meant to uh, Install using the install off of SMC using the stim hack money. So I let him go back and do that. Installs a corroder. <laughs> so one brain gets rid of the Akamatsu. And then the Maker's Eye run in R&D. Oh, my goodness. It's got it locked. Forcing me to have to res. But I don't have enough money. So. Oh, wait. Never mind. You've got the Architect. Which he cannot break. I didn't want to pop the Architect. But uh, I figured if I saw an agenda that he was going to see, I could just install it in a new remote and then get rid of it afterwards on my turn before he can steal it. Um, get it trashed into archives and Jackson it away, which is a lot of stuff to do just to avoid losing another two points. But it pretty much had to be done because he was going to see the top four cards with his Maker's Eye and one RDI installed. So there it is. Install outside, gaining a credit. Um, he should draw for Astrolabe. And then I just had to make sure I put the cards back in the right order. <laughs> and we totally forgot the second sub. A little bit of sloppy play here, but bear with me. I've been playing a lot of Game of Thrones. Um... And this was the first round of the Netrun tournament after however many weeks and weeks of playing Thrones. So, a little bit sloppy on that play there. Uh, tricking the, the one subroutine for getting the second one and allowing him to see cards. But we fixed it, we got it. So advance twice and score. Going broke. Sponsorship will allow me to install and gain credit, hopefully. So I tried to do it in the remote, forgetting about the agenda that I just installed 
outside. So I'm pretty sure I end up fixing that. Or not. Maybe it was an agenda then. I thought it was an agenda that I installed uh, to the far le or bottom of your screen. Yeah, there we go. And so it is six to four. So modded HQI, second click runs HQ, sees two cards, but I had no agendas in hand, I wasn't worried. Third click for money on Katie Jones. And he hits HQ again, hoping to see something different. <laughs> he saw the same two cards, he said. <laughs> oh, that's rough. No new info. So just moneying back up. <laughs> so I believe he just takes money, uh, throws some money down on Katie and pass his turn back to me. So first click Jackson, just praying that I can find an agenda. Instead, find some ice, install it, which cancels out ETF's ability. And uh, install in the scoring server that I've been using before passing turn back. <laughs> so he loads Katie. Runs HQ. Still don't have anything in there to hide. So I know he can't beat the architect. And again, this is just hoping that I pop something off of the architect, uh, an agenda maybe that I can throw down. And knowing that he doesn't have enough money to get into the remote and uh, beat Ash and trash Ash currently. As time in the round gets called. So there's really not much that I can do here. Um, I don't have enough money, even if I was able to install an agenda in the remote, I couldn't score it in just the one turn because of the fact that I'm only at one credit. So this one will end up going to time and a 6-4 modified win. And that modified win actually ended up screwing me over in the end. Uh, there was a three-way tie because we only did four rounds. There was a four-way tie, sorry. And I was the only one with the modified, so automatically I dropped to fourth. Fell out of contention for the day job mat. Fell out of contention for both of the uh, Altart Corroders. So it kind of sucked, but it all 
it all went back to my mistake of not resing Eli and giving up that global food. But yeah, all in all, it was a good job by by Aaron. He played this match uh, very well. He saw that you know he couldn't get into the remote, but if he locked R and D, then that would force me to have to spend my turns doing other things, um, and you'd have a, an amazing chance of seeing all my agendas before I do, which is what happened for the first two. So he played this match uh, very very well, and so. That is it. We end on time. Thanks again for watching. Uh, look forward to rounds two, three, and four in the very near future. Um, I'm on vacation for a week, so there probably won't be any uploads to the channel until uh, post Boxing Day. So, again, thanks for watching and keep running. Peace. 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 Peace.